welcome to Budget Freedom. My name is Jessica. My name is Cristo. And we are married and we live at home and have an online business um, as well as homeschooling our two little kids. So this channel is going to be all about how we live at home, run our business, take care of our kids, and face all the challenges that it is to be married and to work together 24-7. So it should be interesting and very uh, insightful for you as the viewers. We hope to give you a lot of good information that will help you grow your business um, if you have one or start a new business if you'd like to do that um, or just laugh at us if that's what you want to do. So whatever it is that you're looking for we hope that you get a lot of value and um, happiness out of it and please if you like our videos go ahead and subscribe and like uh, so that you can get notifications of new videos that we put out. We are going to try to start putting out at least one video a week for now and then ramp it up as we have time because unfortunately we are extremely busy. Um, we are going to do uh, two series of videos. So the one series is going to be based on our home life and how we run our business and you know the e-commerce e challenges and how we overcome them and basically everything to do with running an e-commerce business and uh, living at home, working as a married couple, and taking care of our kids. And then the other uh, playlist, basically, the other uh, set of videos that we're going to do is going to be about budgeting, which I do. I am an, uh, an accountant um, by trade, and I have a website, which you can go and you can get a lot of free uh, bookkeeping tips, uh, pr uh, principles, debt-free charts, cash envelopes, um, budgets, pre-made budgets that you can follow, and you can ask me questions. Uh, that is my real passion, is learning to live debt-free and just have a lot of money built up on the side so that we don't have to be reliant on credit or anything else like that. But again, that's a separate set of videos, so if you're interested in that, please go ahead and watch those on our channel. Otherwise, we'll just go ahead and jump right into it. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start by telling you how we got started in this business and basically what we had to do to get to where we are now. It's going to be more than one video because it's quite a long story, but we'll do our best to entertain you along the way. <laughs> okay, so um, I am a bookkeeper um, and certified insurance specialist by trade. I've worked in both industries. I am QuickBooks certified um, and I've worked for over 14 years as a bookkeeper and accountant, uh, as well as training people, both any, anywhere from individual people to uh, accountants to become Quick, QuickBooks certified. Um, and before that, I was underwriting and selling insurance policies in the States. Uh, we do live in Europe now, so that's another challenge in our e-commerce e journey, how to do e-commerce from Europe. We don't have all of the extra perks that some of uh, the bigger countries have. We're based in Bulgaria, basically, um, so it's not as easy as being based in France or Germany or UK or um, Spain uh, or obviously the US. Uh, but it's still very doable. We're doing well and uh, there are ways to overcome every challenge that we have faced so far. So we, again, we hope you enjoy it. Um, do you want to go ahead and tell them what your profession is? Yes. Hi, so my name is Christo, as you know. Um, I'm an IT engineer and I have experience about 15 years in the IT field. I, okay, I was, <laughs> just give me a second. <laughs> Sorry guys, yes, it's the first video, so just bear with us, you know, it's a bit new to us, so, uh, we're trying to, to get the best out of it. But yes, so I'm an IT engineer. I have experience 15 years. Uh, I built uh, e-commerce sites, sell online, uh, fix computers, uh, keep up the network, the IT stuff daily to day. <laughs> so as you can tell, yes. I'm the creative one here. Yes. Uh, and that's actually kind of where our journey started. Uh, we were living uh, in a European country, in Cyprus, um, and we were working. We had normal jobs. Um, funny story there, we actually met at the same company in South Africa originally, and that's where we met and eventually got married from. And then we ended up working in the same company again in Cyprus. So we have a lot of experience living and working in the same place, which is not very good for most marriages, but we've gotten used to it. <laughs> 
Um, but we're both very good at being very professional where, when we're at work and doing our jobs and, and really not bringing any personal um, personal things into our business life. And I think that's what really does help. And being a, a married couple working in a business, I think that is one of the most important things anybody out there uh, needs to get a hold of to be successful. You need to be able to say, okay, we are married, but now we're going to our desk. We're going to be at work. And whoever's the boss needs to be the boss. There cannot be two bosses. And the other one needs to, you know, be an employee and be a supportive employee to make the business successful. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, I would definitely agree. See, he's a good employee. <laughs> After many years. <laughs> no, we, we share the responsibilities 50-50. He has his strengths and I have my strengths. And that's what makes us such a good team and what makes us successful. Uh, because I bring the bookkeeping and the accounting knowledge and the creativity knowledge and the writing uh, abilities and skills to the business where he brings the technical skills. And actually without Christo, I would have never gotten into selling online. When we started originally, he would always tell me, I want to sell online. I want to do something online. And I would pretty much laugh at him and go, oh, you're never going to make money like that. I don't know what you're talking about. And then one day he came up to me and he said, you know, I want to move back because we were living in Sapsha. I want to move back to Bulgaria, which is where he's from. No, the real now. truth is actually she was bragging all the time no i don't want to work for anybody i don't want to work for anybody i'm tired of it so end of the day actually i say you know what enough is enough and i was into the it field and thought you know you can become a millionaire from online selling or doing whatever online and uh, i said well i can do it even though it's one thing you can say i can do it and another thing doing it I was the type of, yes, I can do it. So then we say, you know what? Pack your bags. Let's leave now. Let's re uh, resign from the company and go to Bulgaria and we start our online business. The thing is that when we did that, we went to Bulgaria and I shut down. And the person that did the online business was her. And like I say, yes. You, if you want to do something and you're going to go and say, you know what, I want, you can say, I want to do something, but it's one thing you want to do and then doing it. And she's the type of person that is doing the stuff. That's why, yes, she's got the brains. I'm the... You also have the brains. I know, I know. But I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? Yes, she brings the A game. And that's the thing, the creativity, the vision and all that. Okay, back to our story now. Yes. So we moved back to Bulgaria, and we actually had arranged to live at his dad's house. His dad had like an extra apartment for us to live in rent-free, uh, which you need because we had both quit our jobs. We had two little children. Uh, my daughter was four, and my son was one and a half. So we did have unemployment benefits for six months, and we had saved a little bit of money, uh, but not enough for a family of four. I mean, it, it took us six months before we ran out of money. So we had a very, very short... Um, time span, even with free rent, to be able to really get this up and going and start making some money. Which, in hindsight, I don't recommend going cold turkey like that. I definitely recommend starting it slow um, while you have another job. Even if one of you has a job and the other person does it, that's a great idea, but somebody needs to be bringing in income. It did put a lot yeah, of extra stress on us, uh, both of us quitting at the same time. Um, we didn't have much choice, though, because... I'm sure most of you are not familiar, but the economy in Bulgaria, as far as getting jobs, is really bad. So it wasn't really like he could switch and get a job um, in Bulgaria uh, and while I worked. Um, we thought that for us, the best option would be to both jump in, you know, uh, with two feet basically, and just really push it and make money fast. So, yeah, when we started... Yeah, he, he, we set up the whole office. We set it up really professionally. We both, I mean, he's an IT guy, so obviously we had everything. Servers, printers, computers, screens. I mean, the work set up, a full office. And for one week, I just watched him wake up every morning at 8 o'clock in the morning and sit in front of his computer with his hands on the keyboard, frozen. Literally not moving till like 6 o'clock at night. And I didn't know what I was doing. I, w I was thinking, oh, what have we done? We just threw away everything. Gave up our whole life, cars we sold, I mean, everything. And we had two little kids. And I'm stuck in this foreign country now. And I can't go get a job. And 
I didn't even know how to do what he had suggested we do. I mean, I had heard like ClickBank and Amazon and things like that, but I, I had no clue what to do. And the only job that I could get is for like 800 level, which is 400 euros. So with 400 a euros, month, yeah. yes, you cannot uh, feed a family. Even now, at 2020, I mean, the normal salary is about 800 level, 1,000 level, which is 500 euros. Mm -hmm. And you cannot survive on that. I mean, your rent is only 400 level, 200 euros. Yeah. So yes, I I I shut down, and I don't know. I could. But why would work. you say you shut down? I guess because I am an adventurer, my personality, and what I have picture in my mind, I have you know this. How can I say it? This imagination that everything is pink and blue, and it can happen right now. You can just take a magic stick and boom, there you go. You're an online, you know, uh, businessman and you're doing a lot of money. Well, and that's how you got me to marry you, I think. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, guys. You can have a plan in your head. If you have a plan and you, you have uh, uh, imagination that, you know, I imagine I can uh, open an online store and start earning tomorrow, you know, five ten thousand euros a month you're lying to yourself and whoever's telling you that is lying to yourself and that's the really sad part we see so many stories every single day of people spending two three thousand dollars euros whatever you want to call it on courses on how to you know start selling or worse you know taking five thousand dollars and buying stock sending it fba and then getting shut down and having all these blocks or saying oh you know i sent it in and i was selling a lot but then i realized i was actually losing money because whoever taught them didn't teach them how to cost it right or um, warn them of the fees and the taxes that they were actually in for and uh, the return uh, amount that you have to actually budget into your um, items because you can't just sell an item uh, and think that you can't, you don't have to factor in the returns. You need to factor in a percentage for returns because returns are really high in online selling. And just returns can put you out of business. So the costing is really, really critical. And that's what I really yes. go into on the budgeting side you yes. know, to try to help sellers out. Um, and we had to learn this all, you know, over the past five years. We had, we've been on a lot of up and downs learning how to cost things correctly, even though, you know, I'm, I'm a bookkeeper and I've worked as an accountant for 14 years. I know how to cost. I was costing for huge hotel chains and diamond mines and, you know, you name it, manufacturing companies. Um, but obviously in, a, as they call brick and mortar shop, a shop or a business that is based in a city, you don't have those kind of return costs that you do selling online. Online is a whole different costing system. It's a whole different monsters that they would say there are things that you have to account to for and rules and you know fees that you have to take into account that people most accountants don't know if they are not in the e-commerce field and this is what is so important for people you know that we want to also share with you guys we want to let you know about this stuff and give you the truth not just try to sell you a course or i mean we're not selling a course anyway but you know we're not in it to like sell you a course we want to really reach out to people and get the truth out there a more balanced such situation it's not that it can't be done it can be done very well we're doing it but it is hard it takes time it takes commitment it takes patience and it takes knowing what you're doing to be successful you know and so anyway we'll get into more of that later but yeah yeah. So basically he froze up and I, I didn't know what to do. And thankfully I got what I got out of him at the time was he said, well, I have this Amazon course. I don't even remember what the guy's name was at the time. Uh, yeah. Uh, I can't remember. He found, that. you know, he's an IT guy. So he found some course online and he said, you can watch this and see what to do with it. And funny thing is my back was actually out. I couldn't even sit up. I was lying on the couch with my legs, you know, up in the air, my head tilted to the side watching um, eight hours. So as I was saying, I was laying, I couldn't even walk. My back was out and I was laying, um, on the couch with my feet up, you know, on huge pillows. And I was watching Amazon and well, the seminar on how to start an Amazon business. Um, and I don't remember how long it was. It was 20, 
four hours, 25 hours in total. Yeah, it was um, a long... So it's quite a long video. It took me a week to watch the whole thing and make notes um, and really try to understand it. Some parts I had to rewatch. Uh, and it didn't give it any like huge secrets. I mean, it was find a niche product, um, make your own brand, brand everything, you know, good quality, good service, you know, find fast shipping. Um, it was really basic stuff, you know, write good descriptions, take good pictures, uh, get you good keywords. So, but for me, you know, being someone who never even had an interest to sell online, it was good information because it was a starting place for me. So I made all my notes of what I thought was, you know, important and pertinent to start with. And then I started making lists of things that I thought I could sell. Uh, and then I started researching them and it's harder to find suppliers or manufacturers than you think. Uh, also creating our brand took quite a while because I, you know, you have to, when you choose a name, you need to think, first of all, of what you're wanting to sell. Does the name fit the brand, the, or sorry, the brand fit that product? Uh, where you also need to think long-term, like what you would want to sell in the future, because you don't want to, let's say, uh, make a brand today, black hats, and then further down the line, if you want to sell rainbow colored hats, it m might not fit. So there's a lot to consider when starting your business. And it took me, it took me about two months to get through that kind of setup process. Uh, and then also looking for new products, all of which through this one was not helping. But that's okay. I forgive him. We all have our ups and downs in life. And you've been there for many of mine. So I thank you. Thank you. Um, and that's what that's part of marriage. And that's why we're doing this video, you know. Uh, part of being mar part of marriage is for better or for worse, richer or poorer, right? And when one partner is down, the other one has to step up, uh, if at all possible. So you know, he was having a hard time and he was down and that was okay because I was able to step up. Um, and through many other times, as you guys will find out soon enough, you know, when I've been down, he stepped up. So that's definitely what makes us a good team um, and helps us stay strong together is just keeping up the teamwork and supporting each other and stepping up when there's something that needs to be done. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that's yeah. pretty much how we started. And then basically for our first product because I was having a really hard time and I needed inspiration I told him let's go to this huge it's basically like a wholesaler's market that they have here and I said let's just go there for a day and walk around and see if anything pops out at us if we get any ideas um, because that's part of the problem a lot of people selling online today especially in America the UK they're selling resale what does resale mean that means that they're buying a known product or a known brand and then reselling it for profit uh, so a lot of people will go to secondhand shops and they'll buy Adidas, they'll buy Nike, they'll buy, you know, whatever it is that they know they can sell and make 20, 30 bucks on. Um, and they'll get it for $2 or $3 from the secondhand shop and sell it for 20 or 30 on online. And obviously you make really good profit on that. But living in Europe or living in more remote places, even in the U.S. or the U.K., there are more remote places where you just don't have that kind of supply. And then on the other side, maybe you don't want to do that. Like me personally, I could never just rumble through secondhand shops and boot sales and garage sales and whatever um, and resell stuff like that. It, it would just drive me crazy. Um, I'm too and, organized for that. And that's why <laughs> that's why actually what, what, what we're trying to do is because there's so many videos out there uh, like, uh, you know, selling on eBay, Amazon, Etsy and other platforms, right? And everybody's talking about how they go to uh, these warehouses or whatever and they buy secondhand clothes and name brand clothes and whatever and they just buy them for one dollar, two dollars and sell them for like 50 bucks and make a quick buck and maybe not a quick buck. I mean, that's obviously their business buying, you know, secondhand and selling, you know, secondhand clothes. They, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I'm not bet mounting anybody yeah i know uh but i'm saying we are here to uh, actually help you uh how to to create a business that uh you can sell your own brand like actually get a brand uh uh, uh get your name up and sell have, your... have product lines have, like we exactly. have product lines we have set product lines that we keep in stock 24 7 all year round exactly and that we just prefer that and like 
like Crystal said, nothing wrong with reselling. We respect that. You know, yeah. um, people are making really good money. But on also, it better so, to them. Sorry, I just wanted to say as well, uh, because we are based in Europe, in Bulgaria, and nobody's talking about how do you actually sell from Europe? How do you yeah. get uh, supplies? How do you get? But it's uh, not only uh, from Europe. Even in America well, or the UK, you know, if you are not into that, if you want to buy two or three lines of items and sell that, that that's fine. But nobody's making videos on it. Nobody's talking about it, but and that's exactly, what we want to do. Exactly, that's yeah. what we want. Yes, yeah. exactly. What so it's, it's really so. just a choice that you want to make. Do you want to go into the reselling side of things where you have to? Um, constantly buy and resell. Now there are pros and cons to both sides. Okay, on the reseller side, you buy cheap and you make good profit, but you don't have a steady um, inventory. Basically, you you don't know what you're going to find. Today you might find a Adidas shirt, and then it might take you three months to find another one. So that is one of the challenges on re the resale side. Whereas on our side, uh, the the <laughs> I can't find the words on our well, side just, of the business yes. uh, where we have product lines. Okay. We have set product lines. So we keep our inventory because right. we actually manufacture or source them. So we always have product, but for us, the cost is a little bit higher. Well, a lot higher actually, because we have certain standards we were set to a certain style, a certain, you know, quality and all of those things cost money. So we don't buy for one or $2, you know, we're buying for $10, $8, $12 and up. Um, to, to keep that quality and to keep that standard uh, alive. So we also have to sell for higher. Um, yeah. And so there's, there's challenges on both sides, both sides. So it's not, it's again, it's not right or wrong, which way you choose. It's just a personal choice, but we chose to make a brand. We chose to have lines in stock and we chose to go kind of more premium quality um, with our inventory. So that's what we're going to share with you because that's what we're doing. And that's what we know. Yeah. So yeah, being in, in Bulgaria, I just fell in love with hats basically when we went to this wholesale place. There was one guy there that had a pretty cool hat shop and I just started trying on all the different hats and Chris has always loved hats because he's bald. Show them your bald head. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm bald. <laughs> Here you go guys. So, What's up? <laughs> so we love hats and yeah. we just, we, we went in not even thinking, oh, we're going to sell hats. We just started trying them on and having fun. And before I knew it, I said, you know, hey, this would be really cool to sell hats online. And again, we don't want to get into too much detail now, but another thing you want to think of when you're selling online is obviously how much something weighs, how big it is, and so on. So hats kind of fit all the boxes that we had. And we thought, cool, let's go ahead and start with that. And we only bought two or three um, kind of as a test. And they really took off. And that's how we started. And it's just gone up from there. So that's kind of as a short, short, long version of how we got into it. We have a lot more to tell you, but we don't want to make this video too long. So we'll go ahead and cut this and call this part one of our uh, e-commerce journey. And we'll go ahead and make part two and put that up for you next week. So again, if you like our video, if you like what we're doing and you want to hear more, please subscribe or and hit the like up, button. Like buttons, yeah. yes. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye, Bye. guys.